Wheel Torque Solutions is taking uh, the, the theory of, of the wheel joint and trying to maximize all of the characteristics that are needed to give us a joint that will re remain tight. There are basically three types of joint failures that can occur. Uh, the first is vibratory. Uh, the second is what we call a, a creep joint type failure where the joint actually fails from the inside. And the third is a uh, expansion or contraction that occurs from the heating and cooling of the, of the joint. You have a little bit of that in the wheel joint, but the primary factor is uh, the loss of thickness within what we call the grip length. And the grip length is shown back here on the screen. It's the distance between the head of the bolt and the very first thread in the nut. And what you're trying to do, and what we've done in this solution, is trying to maximize that grip length. So the longer the grip length, the better compression you have in the joint. Uh, the one inch distance on a bolt will allow you about three thousandths of a stretch and that'd be the bolt's ability to go back to its original state. So if you have a longer grip length well, with the uh, Alcoa rims, which give you another couple inches of stretch, so it gives you about eight to 12 thousandths of stretch in the bolt. But that bolt will come back to its original state in conjunction with the, the pack nut, which has the ability, which is already compressing from the Belleville washers, approximately 20 thousandths. Uh, all those things combined give you a safety factor in the internal mechanism of the joint. The first component we're going to talk about today is, is the pack nut. On the nut itself, we've got a, a, a sleeve that we put in. This sleeve uh, minimizes the, the movement between the, the wheel and the bolt. It actually is built up with a series of Belleville washers. So these Belleville or conical washers then deflect during the torquing process. It increases the deflection in the joint by three times uh, that of a solid nut, giving us again that additional preload. And if Ted can show you here, we have a maximum of uh, 4 thousandths diametrical tolerance between the bolt and the nut. This is what causes what you see the elongated bolt holes. So by putting the sleeve on the nut, you minimize that movement. We're down to a half a millimeter of tolerance and we're slowing down the joint failure. The pack nut itself is capable of withstanding 90,000 pounds of tension and with that same thing going to higher torques in the 600 plus range, we're getting into the 60, 70,000 pounds of tension, we need stronger bolts. We have a specialized chemistry in our raw material. Uh, we spec out our chemistry exactly before it goes into the cold header. Uh, we have a proprietary cold performing process in which uh, much tighter process controls on our process. We roll our threads right after we do the cold forming. And we have a proprietary heat treat process, uh, specific times and temperatures that go in the furnace that give us the maximum amount of uh, hardness on the bolt that we can require. The other advantage you get with the stronger components, the stronger wheel bolt and the stronger uh, pack nut is you get an increased service length. So there is a substantial cost savings for the fleets and the garages long term. You won't be replacing the bolts as often, or nor will you be replacing the nuts. That's one way to save costs. Another cost saving factor is the higher torque values. You won't be bringing your trucks back in to have the bolts and the nuts re torqued the next day. So, that's substantial time savings for the fleets. We have uh, created a maintenance uh, procedure for this with some uh, several Chicago pneumatic tools that we have come up with. It's really a high speed sander with a 3M bristle disc that we're using on it. We've got a uh, right angle grinder that we have come up with with an apparatus on it to clean the studs. The next thing that we had to do was, you know, we wanted to line up the wheels perfectly so the sleeve nuts will go in. What we did find out by doing these sleeves is now we're actually pushing the brake drum on with them. So then we had to go to heat treat so they had the strength to do that. But they'll actually push the brake drum and seat the brake drum. But what else we found out about the Alcoa lineup sleeves as we did this is it protects the studs. So it protects the studs as we put the wheels over so you don't damage the studs. Again, they want maximum use of their parts, their studs and their nuts. So as you can see now, Ricardo is actually going to seat this drum. Before, that was not happening. Now we know every time that the drum is actually seated. And then as he takes the wheels and starts to put them on, um, they, they're going to protect the studs and they're going to be lined up perfectly. You know, we get into the aluminum wheels, and Ross talked about grip length. Aluminum wheels can do other things. The aluminum wheels brings a lot of advantage to 
a lot of the vocation system. Uh, first of all, aluminum wheels are always much stronger than the steel wheels. Uh, anybody in the industry has always known that a forged aluminum wheel is much stronger than a steel wheel. That's always been there. The other great thing about aluminum wheels is they're lighter than steel wheels, so you can haul more per payload. The other great thing about aluminum wheels is they can dissipate heat at a much greater rate than steel wheels. So we always had a lot of great characteristics in the aluminum wheel. But what we've learned out of this study was that in the refuge industry, they could actually get up to temperatures to melt the paint on some of their steel wheels. And if the paint starts breaking away, then you're going to loosen up the joint and you're going to have wheel offs. So here's another issue that you don't have to worry about that, that paint breakdown and you get all these other great advantages from the aluminum wheel. Then, to get the proper grip length, the thickness of the aluminum wheels was just a must. So what we always had as big advantages now even became bigger advantages in this system. Now we're going to look at the proper torquing on the Chicago Pneumatic Torquing Tools from the standpoint of their pneumatic tools and of the electric tools in this process that we put together. The pneumatic tool, what you're going to look at, a uh, tool has been in our line for many years. We've just adapted the front end, put a reaction bar and a drive on it so that we could do fleet work. Two air motors in it, one rundown. And we got a secondary motor. When you, we start to achieve our clamp load, you'll hear it almost stall out. That's where the secondary motor kicks in. Goes down to about eight RPM, so that's where all the, uh, the power really comes from. What we're gonna show you now is an electronic version of this tool that we have put together. Now we don't have all the apparatus with, but what we're doing on this, we're scanning, uh, before we get started, we're scanning the technician, we're scanning the truck, we're scanning the axle, the wheel that we're working on, as well as the date of the time that we're doing this. Full accountability, full traceability, which is what we're after. It's all stored in what we refer to as our CVIC box. We can download this into our laptop or into our mainframe, so we can maintain all of this information on every wheel that we do. On the back of the gun, there's a green and red light. It's kind of a go, no go setup on it. If we get a green light, that tells us we've got a perfect torque. So we've got this set at 525. We'll go ahead and run this down and uh, kind of show you how this works. And you'll see the 525 pop up when we're finished. Green light kicked up on the back of the tool. We're showing 525 foot-pounds on here, which is the, the torque that I was desiring. This whole process we put together, number one, you know, wheel maintenance. We want the proper solution we could come up with, but the main underlying feature of this whole thing is safety. That's our whole target. Consistent uh, uh, settings is really what we're after. You tend to be all over the place when you're using other guns, one inch or half inch or three quarter guns even. So what you're getting here is precise measurement every time and uniform readings all the way around the wheel every time. Torque retention is something that we know a lot of people don't practice on a regular basis. This can help you eliminate the need to retorque because these components are so state of the art compared to what has normally been in our industry that we can actually solve those two issues. So it is a giant step forward in our industry. One of the questions that is that uh, arises over wheel torque solutions is, is why we're going above our industry recommended practices. Uh, in the organizations such as TMC. And the reason for that is we put together a package and develop the package as a unit. We know that the higher tensions that are created by the higher torques have, a, have allowed us to use specific components that have been designed to go to those levels. Uh, if you just do this with standard components, you risk the chance of yielding uh, studs and nuts and having issues. But together, uh, as a unit, we've overcome those and created parts that work together and solve the issue and allow us to get to uh, walking away from retorques and keeping secure tight joints.